Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen, to Global Impromptu Speaking Session number 252nd. Thank you so much for joining in today. Today, now we are ready to start a session, which is uh, another milestone achievement target, which is going to be to 300th meeting. Let's see when we achieve 300 meeting, inshallah. We have already completed 250 meetings. And uh, let's put our hands together to cheer each one of us. And let's welcome today our uh, guest, Toastmaster Adityam Raminder Singh, who is an old friend of mine. We've been a part of one of the clubs in UAE and a very supportive gentleman. And today he's here and we warmly welcome him. Ladies and gentlemen, this session is being recorded and will be uploaded on social media. If you like to see how you manage your version, your take on a given topic, you can go and check the link and improve yourself and be your own judge, but be nice to yourself because we all make mistakes. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll be speaking for at least one minute and maximum two minutes and 30 seconds. You'll be managing your time by yourself. These are two challenges. One is the topic. Second is managing your own time. Normally I fail in managing time, but anyways, this is how we learn. Ladies and gentlemen, I will not take much of time, but today our host, our topics master is Master Pratyush Kutta, a gentleman who has been supporting this platform for a long, long time. And today he is uh, weak, uh, according to him, uh, with his bandwidth, but he is going to diligently play his role, which is his topics master's role. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together to welcome those master Pratyush Gupta on the digital podium. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, DTM, for this uh, warm welcome. And today we are going to have fun with some topics and some interesting questions today. So without much ado, I will like to start the fun. And uh, for is that my first uh, speaker who will be introducing about this podium with her uh, great uh, knowledge will be uh, Toastmaster Farida. Toastmaster Farida. Yes. And you, you are the first and uh, your topic today is, when B is not functioning, press A. When B is not functioning, press A, Toastmaster Farida. When D is not functioning, press D, A. When D, D is not functioning, press A. A very good evening to my global impromptu family members. First of all, I must reiterate that in this life, life is full of choices. It is the environment that is around us. It gives us a lot of choices. Be it right, be it easy, be it difficult. So we always have options and our life is full of options. And also when one door closes, there are always other options and other doors to explore and to open. So my dear Global Impromptu family members, this is what I would like to, to suggest that when one option doesn't work for you, look for other options. There is always going to be one particular door which will open for you. Even though sometimes momentarily we get extremely disheartened and if things don't go our way, we feel, oh my God, our world is collapsing around us. And what is this? And we are stuck in this, this maze and we can't get out of this situation. But there will always be an option. Don't try to hew that particular option. Try to go for it, find it, and achieve your goals in life. That is my take for tonight. And a very good evening to everybody. Love you all. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Fadi, for the amazing take as usual. And now I would like to call Toastmaster Shaman. Yes. Toastmaster Shaman, are you? Yes. Sir. Yeah, yeah. The topic yeah. is. Your topic is, it is better to commit smaller mistakes for the sake of bigger rights. It is better to commit smaller mistakes for the sake of bigger rights. So, Master Sherman. Yeah, when you do the macro picture, you have to forget about the uh, micro level. Uh, Mr. Topic Master, and global friends and you have to see the bigger picture so when you see the bigger picture if you are achieving the 
big picture, small things we can avoid or, or small mistakes we do. So without doing the small mistakes, you can't achieve the, the bigger picture, the bigger target. So one thing uh, actually it says, uh, if you want to achieve the main thing, you have to eat the, take the small chunk of the work, do it. But in, in number of small chunks or number of small things, uh, it is collectively you get the bigger or the, the macro level uh, achievement. So sometimes uh, one or two maybe fail, but if you are number of small things, incorrect. So you are definitely achieving your target. So always don't look at the small things and think about the, uh, the whole world. Uh, if you think of something about the, your village level, your country only, uh, sometimes uh, you will not get the uh, real meaning of that uh, achievement. So you have to see the internationally, you have to see the whole world. What do you think when you are uh, what are you praying? You have to uh, think about that the whole, whole world is getting better. All world's world is in peaceful situation. Uh, you know, doing meditation also. It says, if you come to uh, the whole world, then come to your the country and your area, your friends, and that's uh, that's my take today. Over to you, Mr. Topic Master. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Sherman, for that take. And now I would like to call Toastmaster uh, Rabinder. Sir, uh, are you Toastmaster or guest? Uh, Toastmaster Raminder Singh, I guess. Yes, I'm Toastmaster. Yes, yes, yes. Sir, your topic is It's really entertaining until It's really entertaining until Toastmaster Raminder. Good evening, everybody. Everything is like that only. Till we do it, we cannot say what is it. When we do something, we are not knowing whether it is entertaining or whether we are going to learn out of it. It is a mindset we take it. When I came to this meeting, I was not having anything in my mind. But I was having in mind that I am going to meet Mr. Toastmaster, or rather DTM Amjad Ali, a long time. So, but I am enjoying the table topics from all of you. So, unless until I made it to come to see all of you and join the meeting, it has never happened. So in life, everything is like that. Unless until you do something, you will not able to know what you are going to achieve out of that. In Toastmaster also, when I joined the Toastmaster, I was not knowing what it is. I was knowing that, okay, this platform is for communication and leadership skill. But as soon as I am into it, so I have got, it is not only the learning about communication and leadership. It is about the, your life, how you want to live, how you are going to behave with the people. They, in Toastmaster, the habits are developing, not only communication and leadership. It is the habit which we are developing. If, um, when I did my HPL, or I did my lecture on, I mean, project on leadership, it gives you an indication that how you have to react. It. So that is the thing until we act upon, we don't know whether it is a, what it, it is. So I sum up that unless until do, you are taking action, you cannot get what your, uh, what, you are going to get out of it. Over to the toast, the table topic, Master. Thank you so much, sir. And I agree that until we experience the thing, we cannot say whether it's entertaining or not. Our next speaker today is uh, Toastmaster 
Chandra. Toastmaster Chandra. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So your topic is the grass is green where you water it more. The grass is green where you water it more, Toastmaster Chandra. Very good. Good evening, Toastmasters. The grass is green when you put a more water. Perfect example. In childhood, I always loved to go to my grandparents' house. You know why? Because my grandfather is a very joyful man. Also, I get to play with him. I get to eat more food. I get to do whatever I want. And also, he teaches me many, many good things. One example is that every day I used to go with him to the farm, my farms. My grandfather never sit idle. He always do something for the cattle or the, the land, fertilizing it or planting trees. 30 years ago, he planted many trees. I also participated along with him. We planted coconuts, we planted mango trees, we planted banana trees and mulberries. My grandfather, 15 years ago, he passed away, but I'm still eating what my grandfather planted the trees. He planted it and I used to pour the water into that plants. And even though my grandfather is not there, but I'm able to enjoy that relation, that fruits. And I'm also my, my children here are eating those fruits. So that means we should not sit idle. There's so much land and we should utilize this land, plant for some people, right? A lot of people need a food. All you need to do is one plant can produce a 500 coconuts or 500 mangoes per year, one tree, right? So that means 500 people can eat. All you need to do is keep planting, keep pouring water, and sooner or later, you will see a big change and feed hungry people. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. A great way of relating the topic with the real life, Toastmaster Chandra. Our uh, next speaker today is Toastmaster Sam. Toastmaster Sam. Yes. So your topic is be bold if you are clean bold. Be bold if you are clean bold, Toastmaster Sam. I guess all of us have heard this phrase, fake it till you make it, right? So this is something which is actually true. And I have seen this and I have experienced this uh, during my uh, club contest uh, and during my initial stage of Toastmasters. Uh, so when I joined Toastmasters, I was a pretty, uh, you know, introvert person. I was very shy kid and I could not uh, speak properly. So my mentor told me that there is nothing uh, to worry about because this is a platform where everyone appreciates uh, the speaker. So even if you feel that uh, you get frightened, don't try to show that. Try to show the confidence. Try to fake it till you make it. And this is something which uh, is very true in any situation, not just in public speaking. Uh, if if you just show that uh, you're pretty confident, uh, though you are not, uh, the others will feel uh, the same that you are pretty confident. And this is something which you can also show in your leadership. When I started my leadership journey, I was not sure because I had also never been a monitor in my school. So I thought, how can I lead uh, the people whom I do not know? But I faked it and slowly and gradually people started believing in me. And that belief, you know, brought confidence in me. And at the end of the term, everything went well. So this is something which I can relate to that if uh, you fake it, you can surely make it. Thank you so much over to your table topic master.
Thank you very much, Toastmaster Sam. And yes, we should never give up until we achieve it. And now I will call Gavilier Jatin. Gavilier Jatin, are you available? Can you hear me? Yes. So I have a question for you. It's the first question today. And the question is just, why me? Why me, Gavilya Jatin? Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, good morning, fellow Gavilyas and senior Toastmaster. My name is Jatin, and today my topic is why me? Uh, when I, I'll tell you one situation. Always, uh, Whenever I'm playing a game or doing something which I like, and my mother says that, keep the clothes in your rack. I used to say, why me? Why should I do it? Tell, uh, uh, give that job to my sister. I'm in the middle of something. But my mom used to say that, what's the point doing that stuff? It's not going to help for your future. And I used to get really frustrated. I used to tell this word, why me? Why me? Why me? My parents got really frustrated and really annoyed with it. And they used to, uh, one time they also shouted at me and be, uh, also they, yeah, they also shouted at me and almost grounded me because uh, I'm always saying this, why me? And I'm not doing the work. So the, what they did is that they wanted to uh, give a taste of my own medicine. So I asked my parents that, uh, give me a, uh, I, I asked my mom that, can you give me the, uh, say, uh, can you give me the sandwich or can you make it? And my mom said, why me? And this is the time when I realized uh, how it feels, how they feel it. Like, it's it feel, it's so hurtful that when, uh, when they're not doing when I ask them to do. So this is, the this, this is how I realized, uh, realized it. And... We should never uh, tell this why me. Yeah, you should always do it, even if your parents say or anyone says. Uh, that's my take. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gavilier Jatin. A great improvement. And uh, we must say that why not me instead of saying why me. Now I will call Toastmaster Sujit. Do we have Sujit here? Yeah, I'm, I'm my voice is like, you know, audio is on. <laughs> yes. So your topic today is better never than being late. Better never than being late, Toastmaster Sujit. I have heard a proverb which talks about better be late then be, you know, nev uh, never reach there. But I've been given a very directly opposite topic, which talks about basically, you know, uh, it's better, I would, uh, I'd never do that instead of being late. So it depends on time and circumstances and what we are talking about. If there are certain things, uh, say you, if you want to play cricket or, or, or do any sports, if you don't do it at the right time, it's never going to happen. But there could be a lot of other circumstances. Say uh, whatever daily code we, which we do. Even if you do it late, it's better not doing it anything. Say, for example, my journey at Toastmaster, I've started very, very late. But I consider it to be better than not having started at all. As someone was pointing out, uh, you know, uh, a couple of meetings back when he was telling that, what is the point of a person who has been there on earth 40, 50 years, but still couldn't like speak I, I wanted to tell at that point of time, when has it started this journey? No, don't see 
till what point he has reached just see how much distance he has covered what do you think table topic master yes i absolutely agree with your take that uh, it depends on our circumstances that whether we should do it if we are late or we should uh, rather not do it considering the factor of time now our next speaker is uh, none other than uh, distinguished toastmaster jessie yes babu tell me yes the topic is if if necessity is the mother of invention who is the grandmother if necessity is the mother of invention who is the grandmother ttm jessie i thought you would ask me if necessity is the mother of invention who is the father but you are asking me who is the grandmother if necessity is the mother of invention grandmother is maybe urgency these mothers all always are on the job and their heart is towards getting something done any time uh, um, is there is a problem and there is a necessity uh, take for example this lockdown when the lockdown happened for some days we thought it will go but it so happened that we have to survive uh, uh, schools closed parks closed uh, churches closed mosques closed everything closed we were confined in the house then there was a necessity to communicate and someone uh, uh, one platform open zoom then open team google meet chat all this uh, online platform open the entire world is now become a virtual probably will forget to go back to the the physical now physical people some people don't prefer to go out so it is the necessity which creates the the the, the primary uh, in uh, uh, module or primary uh, what you call uh, primary agent uh, of in, uh, in innovations and who could be the grandmother grandmother is, comes even faster than the mother because she has learned the ropes she has gone through and she knows exactly so grandmother will be the one who will inform much in advance look this lockdown is going to open and who whoever is doing the first one probably zoom was the grandmother of all these things or google meet was the grandmother of a, a virtual i i will have to take i will have to check their date of birth when they introduced so as the uh, our recipes take for example when we cook a recipe the recipe of the mother um, grandmother is much better than the recipe of the uh, mother so always the necessity makes the the mother of invention and the grandmother is is the uh, is the the first and the foremost uh, teacher to teach the, the 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 mother for to invent something and rather go and make it and make a living so always the necessity and the urgency is the mother and the grandmother over to you pratyush thank you very much uh, dtm jessi and i clearly remember now that uh, in my childhood day when i came back to house and i was hungry my mother was preparing food and uh, when my grandmother entered the kitchen it prepared very fastly Faster. and i was very happy that day <laughs> and so our next speaker is uh, ahmad uh, Ahmad is Ahmad with us. I don't think that uh, Ahmad is uh, present here. So our next speaker is uh, Toastmaster Preeti Pathak. Thank you, Toastmaster Preeti. Your your topic is how can I how can I Toastmaster Preeti. how can i how can i this statement can be a question and this statement can be a surprise <laughs> if you ask me 
come down to Dubai, I'll say, how can I? There are a lot of restrictions in my country. So it might be just a question with an inquiry. How can I do this right now? It's not possibility. But sometimes it could be just a kind of inquiry. How can I make a bulb? With this statement, when somebody started the search and there was one bulb which failed, one attempt failed, another attempt, there was another inquiry, how can I do it still further if not this way? So there was not a full stop after that question. There was another question, what, if not this way, how can I still get this bulb because I'm not ready to be defeated by a zero answer? I do not accept the defeat. And when I have this urge to find out how can I, that's when a bulb was invented. That's when the first plane was invented. That's when the man landed on moon. And that's when a person, a girl like me goes to the kitchen and learn how can I make that new vegetable soup for my parents. It's always a question with interest. How can I always that prompts us to do try something new, which you've never tried. If there is an excuse, how can I that will not help. So when you say help next time, how can I do you have a spirit of inquiry or do you have a spirit of excuse and that will make all the difference. How can I thank you. I wish that uh, people who face this question on their daily life can uh, get in contact with you because you have the perfect answer for the question. Thank you, Pratish. Our, Thank you. <laughs> our next uh, next speaker today is uh, once again mm, yes, it's uh, Toastmaster Savita, and uh, a slight change today because she used to be the first speaker. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm traveling, so I am uh, yes. joining from my phone. Yes, please. No, no, no issues, man. No issues, man. Thanks for giving the surprise today. <laughs> so, and your topic is: What did they taught you? What did they taught you, Toastmaster Savita? Thank you so much, um, Table Topic Master Toastmaster Pratish Gupta, and my greetings to everyone present here. So many things, I can't even count. I should start with my parents. The learning for I think every child starts with parents. Yes, the beginning of life, how to stand, how to walk, how to eat, how to take first step for the learning, they taught me. And then when I entered the school, in school, school, during school age, my teachers, they taught me. My elder siblings, they taught me so many things. There, was so, there are so many people around us who are our teachers in many ways. Teachers are not always only in the school. I consider people who are all around us, they teach us in some way or other. We have to be student. Then in corporate world, you learn from boss, you learn from colleagues. Yes, they taught me. And now in this postmaster journey, I think we are learning every day in every meeting, so many things we are learning from each other. All of you are indirectly there, you are my teacher. Yes, you're teaching me. So if we have the intention, if we have the incline to be a student in our life, throughout, I think we can learn from people around us. So everyone is, I think, teaches me in something or other. So they, for me, is a big, big, big word. Everyone teaches. They, they taught me. They taught me. I can name and take so many words. Yes. For all of you, if you if I put you into the brackets, they taught me. Thank you very much. Back to you, Toastmaster Pratyush. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Savita. You told us that who taught you and also what to uh, learn. 
and uh, our uh, next speaker today is uh, toastmaster jaya i'm uh, toastmaster jaya a very good evening yes good evening the topic today is the greatest mistake you never did the greatest mistake you never did toastmaster jaya a very good evening to impromptu members and your guests the biggest mistake that i never did well till today i have never made a mistake what kind of mistake speaking lies never running away from the house never cheating never and what as i can think of i never made mistake in life um yeah speaking betraying my parents till today i have never done anything wrong and if i did anything i would inform my parents or people around me so that i don't get into trouble so i so my parents whoever it might be trust me that is most important if you betray them then no one is going to trust you in life you will just be hooed that's why i would um suggest all of you to never make any mistake in life yes on other hand if i say i never made any mistake i think i been i must be lying to myself how can that be i'm sure you all must be thinking how can that be i never make that a uh, single mistake i must have made some mistake but tiny weeny mistake which has no a uh, big deal so yes i've never made a biggest mistake in my life apart whether according to my knowledge or not the silly mistakes that i must have made it doesn't matter doesn't hold any big difference so to my um, i would suggest all of you never make mi- mistake in your life that kind biggest mistake that will hew your neck hew your head in life that you will never never be able to face over to you thank you very much toastmaster jaya and yes we may always make silly and careless mistakes but we must keep in mind that we must not make a mistake that uh, takes a different shape and now our next speaker is toastmaster varun Toastmaster. Hi. Yes, I am here. Yes. So I am sorry for the is... background noises. Yes, please continue. Yes. So your topic today is: uh, Will you innovate? Will you innovate, Toastmaster Varun? How many of you think that? Indian cuisine can be presented in a different way. Well, maybe one or two. What do you know about cuisine? It is a kind of food or a recipe or a dish which present which represents India. I am onto the path of doing something as the same way. In the previous meetings, I have told that I am learning cooking. 
but what exactly am i learning here i am learning how to cook it is not about what am i learning it is not about what am i uh, am i recreating the dishes no it is mostly about the types of cooking methods that can be either roasting or braising or blanching or cooking it can be anything i can do sous vide which is simply just cooking in a controlled temperature or and then grilling that or i can simply roast something for example if you take chicken uh, chicken butter masala the well, chicken butter masala is not from india it is a dish of london but you can present it your own way and that own way is nothing but innovation my dear fellow toastmasters and guests innovation is something which you recreate yes it can be either present already in the history but whatever is your influence in that your influence in that that is innovation you can either make a butter chicken masala with chicken separately with the butter and masala in a separate way and then present it that's innovation yes i can innovate but the issue with that is the freedom you cannot present a butter masala chicken butter masala without chicken right the same way you need to have one specific or a reference around your dish or your concept so that people will be able to understand people will be able to get connected to for that you know which well that's my take on it what about yours how can you innovate over to you table to us yes sir thank you so much for that wonderful take and we must say that we have a great innovator among us today with uh, ideas to make it bigger thank you so much our next speaker is toastmaster pragya toastmaster she logged out okay so our next speaker today is once again none other than distinguished toastmaster navin hi good evening good evening sir the topic today is will you edit or delete will you edit or delete dtm navin parival <clears throat> fellow toastmasters i uh, i uh, like, like currently i am more than 50 years old and let me tell you i come from a generation where if anything goes bad we do not throw it we we repair it and we reuse it and we make it better so that's how things are so, so rather rather than than deleting it i would definitely prefer editing it and making it better or enhancing anything <clears throat> because that, that's what and that's how relationship work <clears throat> sorry about because relationships which require effort to be maintained can never be true and if if a relationship is true it will not require any effort for it to be maintained yes that's what the young generation needs to understand today that is how exactly do we do we man, man, maintain manage relationships or do we really discard them but no. so so the thing is make some effort to improve things and i'm sure over a period of times period of time depending on your creativity you can end up with much better things i'm sure that all of us in every day or in our phase of of a life we fa- we face low times and high times and of course during low times there are a lot of negativity and a lot of negative thoughts which really come up in my, in, in my mind that is uh, should i be doing this and should i be doing that or we start we start uh, cursing others that is they are responsible for for anything which goes bad 
but of course if you edit those those same things so i'm i'm very sure that that, that is things can become way better rather than delete deleting it or going through agonizing time so that's how that's what i always advise to youngsters that is work on any relationship if you feel it's bad or if it's toxic and it may turn out to be much better because do do remember that no relationship is a waste of time if it doesn't get you what you do not want it teaches you what you don't want so so, so rather than, than deleting anything work on it and i'm sure the edit option would be way better than the deleting option over to you toastmaster of the day thank you very much uh, toastmaster uh, dtm navin parwal and we always make better version of ourselves and others if we get the opportunity so we should never delete any kind of relationship in our life if we can make it better in a way by working on it with this our final speaker of the evening and i will like to call dtm amjad our host and the king of this podium sorry can you call me after one speaker after you sorry okay. thank you oh, okay so anyone will like to give me a topic then i will i am ready to speak i can ask you question yes yes sir sure if you want to plant a tree what plant would you like to plant so that you know it lasts for other generations and why i will like to plant a rose tree because rose is very much beautiful it smells and its essence feels like you are on the top of everything but one aspect about this very plant is that there are so many pines and if you try to take it out it might harm you or it might pin in such a way that blood might come out of your fingers in our daily life we must make such kind of relationship that we can protect it we must make beautiful things we must make beautiful relationship we must develop beautiful qualities but we must be sure that anyone cannot take it away from us because i have seen people around me with various faces smile on their face but mind filled with jealousy mind filled with negativity so in order to protect the beautiful things you have achieved in your life you must have the quality to tell someone to stay away from your dynasty if you find that person is going to harm your beautiful belongings and that is what a rose plant teaches us develop a beautiful thing thing and let it grow but if anyone tries to destroy it make sure that the person can never achieve in his or her evil motive over to you table top master thank you thank you thank you sir for giving me the topic and now i see that uh, our king is ready so ttm amjad Yes, sir. I'm available. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, your topic today is: if someone is your right hand, then what about your left hand? 
if someone is your right hand then what about your left hand dtm amit thank you so much mr topics master if someone is your right hand then what about your left hand you know these are normal common statements we make someone who is very important to you are important for you we call that person our right hand because right hand is used for right things or correct things we use it so that's the reason is the term used but left hand of course we cannot use it but everyone who is in our reach or who is being used by us or who is uh, good to us is our right and left hand so i think it's just a statement there is uh, no right or there is no left but it's just a statement we use as a common sense that somebody who is in our favor who is giving us a favor who is doing something good for us we call that person our right hand nothing more than that but anyway on a lighter note we can say that somebody who is not in our favor that's our left hand and somebody who is in our favor is our right hand i have nothing much to say about it but it's just a statement we all make that uh, this person is very important to me but this is not used for our family members our family members are close to our heart we don't call our brother our sister our mother our father our son our wife he or she is my right hand they are our blood relation they are body they are part they are soul and somebody who is outsider who is doing something good for us are in our favor that's our right hand nothing much about it over to you mr prathyas gupta thank you so much for this beautiful topic thank you sir and i really agree and i learned that we never distinguish we should never distinguish in people thank you so much and uh, we do not have any more guests today joining so i gracefully hand over this podium to the leader to the host dtm mamjad ali for the closing ceremony thank you sir. thank you so much prasad pratyush gupta really appreciate for this very interesting topic this topic i heard for very first time it was very interesting i have nothing much to say about it but anyways i thought something and i did my best uh, subject to my uh, thoughts availability ladies and gentlemen it was pratyush gupta let's put our hands together to thank him for this thank you pratyush really appreciate it. with that power vested in me as a host of this very meeting i adjourn the meeting thank you so much stay blessed